Hello everybody, my name is Ace Face. I'm trying to find a good T5 Dark Onyx fit and this is the latest uh, iteration of my uh, T5 Dark Onyx fit. We're going to test this out. This is similar to the previous one I used with mitigated crystals, trying to keep the price a little bit on the low end. It's still pretty expensive modules we've got right here, like we've got dual multi-spectrum shield hardeners, Pythium 8 type medium shield booster, but we've got still a really good tank. We've got a uh, the mid-grade crystal set which is not the most expensive implant set you can obviously have high grade crystals that are going to be a lot more expensive and i was thinking of using it initially but i felt like the tank is a bit overkill uh, and then before we were using a med dual medium shield booster fit and that's really good because it can give us a lot of burst tank however i think that uh, it was a bit too much tank uh, previously when i tried it i only need to use like one shield booster. the second shield booster i didn't even need to use so what i'm thinking is i just add a multi-spectrum shield hardener which is actually cheaper then having a second medium shield booster in this slot right here and then also it gives us more buffer so it's also always beneficial to have a bit of buffer in the abyss you know you, when you're having good buffer means you have a lot easier time with the wrecking shots and it just i like having overall good resist because it affects everything it affects your passive recharge affects your shield boosting it affects everything and preserves a lot more capacitor than dual me, uh, medium shield boosters we're going to have a lot more capacitor to spare or uh, while tanking a lot at the same time uh, it's not like our passive recharge is going to do much, but it does do something actually. If we look at before right here, 52 HP per second with uh, because we've got so good resist, so it's not like, nothing to joke around. It is some HP per second. Uh, and then I changed the rigs to be a bit more application friendly. We've got a flare and regal catalyst right here. Before I only had one regal and a bay loading accelerator. We're going to be doing less damage now, but I feel like the increase in application might be a bit more beneficial for us in the dark side. So let's put this to the test. We're using, as I said before, the mid-grade crystal implant set with some 003 implants right here. They're not like crazy uh, expensive implants, but they're 003s just to buff it up. You could obviously use 005s, which is going to be a lot better. I don't like using 004s. I think like the uh, if you're going like for 004s, which cost about like 100 million isk, you may as well just go with 005s that cost like 200 million isk. Oh, uh, six is a bit more like uh, overkill because you just get one percentage right. increase Up over the uh, the fives, and they cost like I don't know six hundred million each. So it's just the you know, price to performance, I feel like, is better with the O fives, the O threes. Okay, let's get down to business. We've got a synth crash booster active right here. We've also got some potential boosters we could use in the case of an emergency. Synth blue pill and hard shell dose one. They're cheap. They're not really. <laughs> They're quite cheap for being emergency boosters, but I just don't really feel like we have any use for them at all because uh, we already have some good tank, but just in case we could start using it. Okay, let's get in range. We're going to be using Kaldari Navy. Have we got Kaldari Navy loaded? Let's see now. Kaldari Navy loaded. Okay. We'll go with Snare Casters. They're not one, we do not want to have these guys here because they're going to cause problems uh, when it comes to taking damage from the Abyssal Overmind. However, we tank him very good because our resists are really great for the Abyssal Overmind. Abyssal Overmind is Thermal and Kinetic. Thermal and Kinetic are two highest resists. Okay, so he's taking a bit of damage right here. We're applying quite a bit better than we did before, but it has also a bit to do with that they're getting their HP reduced from the Demon Automata Suppressor over here. I like to keep my distance from the Demon Automata Suppressors. I would usually, I would keep close to them, but the thing is, when I see, when I want to do these like tests right here, I want to see how good we apply. And that's when I want to just go, like, okay, I'll keep range with them, see if in a work, worst case scenario how it would do. Because I want to test here, I want to test this for the worst case scenario so that if I take some tranquility, I have everything ready to go. Because, I mean, what if I don't have a Demon Order Master Express? I can't rely on them, assuming that to be there to help me out to get the site done. So it's just like, okay, I'm going to keep my range and simulate the best uh, or the worst case scenario and the best sort of testing environment for my fit right here. We can Nosferatu this guy over here. Oh, no, I don't want to go for him there. I want to shoot the, I want to shoot the spotlight over here. Yeah, look, now we're taking a bit of damage, but it's all right. We've got our shield booster, which is really powerful. Shield booster is really powerful. I'm not using it just to preserve the capacity. You can always just try to be a bit uh, resourceful with your capacity, especially when you're on the dark side, which makes it so that you're not taking damage all the time. You don't have to use your shield boosters all the time, just in case with this neuters. You can uh, so you have that extra capacitor you could maybe you know have a bit of a buffer before your capacitor runs out we're not the most newt proof ship right here since we've got only one large cam battery but we do have like this nosferatu which does help us a bit 36 gigajoules as you can see there we're like because yeah we'll just boost our shields up a bit boost it to almost max and we can just chill right here just like that 
We've got the Rage. 719 DPS. We'll get down to business here. We've got, like, we've got this Missile Guidance Enhancer, which is a very nice little module. It improves our range and application. Just see now. I want to see what exactly kind of application it is. Explosive Radius and Velocity. From two, diff two different points, we improve our application right there. So now, what is this guy's resist? Shield, Kinetic. Kinetic is the lowest. Okay, that's good. I'm curious now, how quick are the battleship waves? Because this is the tankiest battleship wave. Uh, at least it will be in the dark side. So, we want to see here if we'll complete this in a good time. Are we getting full application, actually? Let's see now. We've got 1800 volley, 500 damage. Okay, yeah, we are getting full application. When you consider the, take into consideration the resist, this is why we're doing a lot of damage. Why is this lowest resist? Yeah, the kinetic is the best resist to do. It obviously feels like less or a lot slower in the dark sides because you don't have that nice weather resist bonus it just makes everything go a lot quicker you just do that resist type and everything will go quicker like we could do with this fit uh, the uh, exotics that will be a lot better to be honest let's try to push this guy towards the transfer conduit to save a bit of time where is it there we go okay we'll move here to the side because he wants to keep range he's missing us a lot just getting grazing shots but it's a good option to do this when you've got pretty short range ships like the heavy assault missile uh, ship like an onyx we will try pushing him towards the transfer corner because if we go away, he's just going to keep a range. We're not going to get out of range. It's going to be such a horrible mess where we go there, he's going to keep a range. Then we have to go back and then we're going to be away again. And then it's just, we waste a lot more time, much time. Instead, we're going to try to push him towards the transfer corner over there. So we can save a bit of time, but now actually he's almost dead. And I should have thought of this in the beginning. Just, okay, I should have really pushed him or kept him close to the transfer conduit to begin with but it's all right you know you can't always do everything perfect just you learn things you know you learn things more you practice <laughs> okay but i feel like now i could perhaps even make my way towards the transfer conduit because he seems to be like you know, almost dying and probably but then again his structure is pretty fat so i will wait a little bit on uh, the I'm just running away. Maybe when it comes to like 30% structure, I'll run away to the transfer conduit. Time is five minutes. Okay, that is a bit slow. Usually stuff like rogue drone overmind waves should go pretty quickly because they're like, okay, they're really big and fat. They're sitting there, you should be able to get really good applications of them, but I've not got the most amount of DPS. Shield or structure is also pretty high in terms of its resists. Can move here towards transfer conduit. We are using rage right here. What was that wrecking shot? Is that 800 wrecking shot? It was like, whatever. I had 800 wrecking shot. I had just recharged that in three seconds <laughs> because I got 300 per cycle. Yeah, we'll move our way, to make our way towards the transfer button right here. What is time? Oh, almost six minutes. That's actually not a good time. That's not a good time right there. I mean, we will survive. We will survive. It's not like we wouldn't survive here, but it's not nice to see when you see that. Oh, fish is six minutes, 60 minutes times three. What is that? 18 minutes. 18 minutes is close to 20. If you go to 20, what happens? You die. So. Main thing here, what I should have done is kept him close to the transfer conduit. That's what I should think about next time when I encounter battleship web. Not just the the overmind, also the Caribbean Tyrannus as well. Six minutes and ten seconds as well. So the 18 and 10 seconds. Well, 18 and a half minutes, that's how much it would be times three. So you need to be very careful in those overmind waves. And something that could be an option would be to grab some EM missiles to see if that could perhaps give us a better time getting through the shield because the overmind has a really low EM resistance shield. And the shield is actually pretty big as well. So that does, does take a bit of your time. You know? Let's take this Ghoster because he is going to cause so many problems. We're getting some decent application, actually. Whoa, our application right there is off the charts. Poof. Oh my gosh, that is some good application. See now, how good do we apply to this guy right here? Get to this. Oh, we're getting perfect application to the Red Mac as well. We might need to go with Rage here. Oh, wait, we, were, we were using Rage to begin with. Oh, wow. We're getting full application with Rage on these guys. Wait, I just... I thought I was using Kaldari Navy. No, we took out a Damovic with Rage. That's actually very interesting. It shows how good we are right here. Okay. Triglavian waves. They're quite AFK waves. You just have to be wary of mass ghosters at Starburst because you don't want to get muted out, obviously. But
but when it comes to tank you tank so good that you don't really need to use your shield booster half the time because your resists are just off the chart where you've got so much thermal resist and if you keep moving a bit as well in the dark side they're just gonna half the time get out of their spool range as well so now we've got minus 70 percent optimal range so it is a bit favorable towards us in terms of tanking but just remember like he's look at this guy he's just sitting here with a yellow box he can't even shoot us because he's just like oh i can't my range is too short because nerfed to the, to the ground with the dark matter field right here we'll take out the tangle as well he's a bit annoying a bit annoying right there it's like look at that i'm not even using my shield boost our passive recharge is taking care of a bit of the initial dps right here take care of the harrowing vedmac move a little bit to the side i think not enable him to orb too much what is this kinetic resist it's 53 percent okay all right i can use our nosferatu maybe this guy but the it's most optimal to use the nosferatu and the small stuff usually you get a bit more nosferatu when you're going for the big stuff but i'm just taking care of these red max so quickly that i feel like it might be a bit of a waste of time We've also got a Deviant Automata Suppressor as well, so that's going to reduce our DPS even more, but I think we're outside the range of that Deviant Automata Suppressor, so it's alright. Hmm. I was really surprised with the application to that Damovic right there. That Ghosting Dama as well, you know? He was making our application even worse. It's quite interesting to see. Look at that, I'm not even using a Shield Cycle right there. Rage, come on Rage. Scrooge Rage, Heavy Assault Missile, take care of this Red Mac right here. Oh yeah, that's good. Now we'll take out this tangle over here, see how good the application is here. Okay, now it's not so good. So we'll switch over to Kadari Navy. But, I mean, we are getting something. 800 volleys at times, so it's, like, it's not like it's so bad. Okay, move a little bit to the side, maybe. See if we can get that technique I did with those rogue drones before, where they've kept my range. It was doing more damage when I kept range. It was switching in and out of target. It feels like we're doing less damage here, actually. 400 damage. Maybe I should go with Rage. <laughs> Look at that. It looks like we're doing less. Well, okay, now we're doing a lot of damage in the structure, but I felt like we're doing more with Rage, actually. Might be good to go with Rage. Let's go with Rage. See again. Because I mean, we're doing this for testing purposes, so I want to just see. Is Rage better? Is Rage better? That's the big question right here. Because if Rage is better, that means a big thing for the Damovic. Because I was worried a lot of Damovic waves. They've got remote reps. The application can be bad. They're small ships. They, you know, they get some make this the application is bad like you ghost you make your weapons apply worse but it seems like okay it seems like the application is worse here so they're getting 300 damage right there it's so probably just overall better to go with the Kaldari maybe we like we're not using us <laughs> not using the shield booster at all half of the time they're missing half of the time they're just doing like no damage because of this sick 94 percent thermal resist right here yeah oof, look at that some crazy application right here what is time nine minutes 21 seconds i mean it's a lot to do with that uh, the you know the overmind over there causing a bunch of problems it's all right we have plenty of time to spare and we learned a bit of stuff we could have done to make the overmind room quicker this room seems to be going pretty quickly we also learned that kaldari navy is better on the damovix even though it seemed very good at first a rage seems to have no problem with the ved max that's an interesting thing though rage is interesting that we are able to apply so good go towards transfer conduit over here okay synth crash really helps a lot it does help with the explosion radius what is our explosion radius here We've got, no, we want to show the uh, info on the charge ammunition. Show info. Is there no show info here? I want to see what is our explosion radius. Show charge info, yeah. Okay, there we go. 64 meter signature radius. That's actually a very tiny signature radius. It's quite a cool thing to see. And you know what? I've not even got the, <laughs> I've not even got the, like the max uh, heavy assault cruiser. No, not heavy interdiction cruiser skill level. Otherwise we could get more velocity on our missiles to make them apply even further away this is a quite a little side note right there okay we'll go with the uh, scourge rage because i think rodivas have the same similar ai or similar speed of velocity as uh, the bed max it'll just be i think best to use the rage not if we're in attack on cloud though <laughs> 
No, if we attack you on flat though. Look at that, just being flung all over the place. We'll stay here, chill over here where there's no tachyon clouds. Those things, I hate the tachyon clouds. Worst thing ever. Oh, one of the worst things though was added to the abyss. Okay, look how far they are away. Space battle over here. Those guys are pretty far away. We're gonna go for this renewing guy over here since he's not, uh, the other ones don't seem to want to get the range. Yeah, seems like application is pretty good. What's his resist profile? 53% resists. And we've got 1.8k volley. Yeah, we're getting perfect application right here. So, rage is good as I thought on the Rodivas. We can also put a bit of range and get some 1.2k volley, like as if it's nothing. And here we can now start using our shield booster just a bit, you know, just, you know, casually use our shield booster a bit right there. I mean, I think you could also just downgrade this, to be honest, to B-type, but I prefer to stay on the bit of the safe side of A-type. The main thing I'm worried for, as I've mentioned before, I think the Cinnabaru might cause a bit of problems. It might cause a bit of problems because of your low EM resist. Uh, I don't think it's going to be too bad since we've just naturally got quite a good amount of shield boosting capabilities. or will take them out probably pretty quick as well. After this Rodeo over here, we switch over to the the Kaldari Navy. Use that to speed up the process with these drones. There we go. Now I get the Kaldari Navy over there. We can just slow them down with the web. And take them out. 1k volley, oof. But now it feels so much better with the application rigs with the rogue drones. It's so it felt felt really quick right here. Like those rogue drones initially in the rogue drone overmind wave, it felt like it went a lot quicker than it did before when I was doing it in my previous fit for the T5. It's also a bit to do with that I learned the technique of just keeping a range. It seems to improve application a lot. You just move a bit around like this. And it seems to just improve your damage somehow, so in some way. Lock up the rest of these guys. Don't know how many lock targets the Onyx has. If it's Tech 2 ship, it might have a bit more lock targets than usual. No, it's like classic six targets. It's 420 DPS or volley. Yes, nice to see. Nice to see. Now, if I was playing on real like tranquility, I would try to go for that Diva Automata Suppressor right there because these guys are going to be ripped to pieces. Even though it would take out missiles, it'll be more effective. Or I think it'll be more effective to just go for the. to go for the Diva Automata Suppressor. Because it's just doing damage to everything. AoE damage just to be so crazy. But on the other hand, it is quite far away, so it will take a bit of time. But maybe we could just like take out the drones and then we'll move towards the transfer conduit and use, take out the Rodivas in the meantime on the way towards the transfer conduit. So that could be an option. Origin Conduit, finish this in 16 minutes. So time is not that great, but I think that this is better than before. Even though we finished this uh, site worse or in a uh, like longer time frame than the fit that had more DPS and less application, it's because we were up against waves that were pretty favorable for time before. Like here, we were against uh, the Rogue Drone Battleship, which is the wave that takes a lot of time because of brute force uh, DPS, and that's obviously going to be worse when you've got less brute force DPS. And then also, we encountered uh, a lot of Rogue Drones. They're going to take a bit of time to take out when it comes to application. I mean, Dark Sight is not the most optimal to take out those small stuff, but still, we managed to get through it, and application was perfectly acceptable at least. So I'm quite curious just how the angel wave works and might be might also want to see how a mass Triglavian Damovic wave to, uh, goes with uh, a lot of ghosters and also Kerberos Tyrannus. So I'm quite curious how that would go. I think it will go all right, but I've not encountered Kerberos Tyrannus and it is a pretty potent wave. A lot of DPS that you can potentially take, but usually it's not too much of an issue in the dark side. So that's enough for now. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe. I'll catch you guys later.